Maybe. Jack was confused by the blast. He wanted to go up to save his teammate, but he only took one step. The sound that came from under his feet made his heart thump. It was another landmine. Jack instantly frowned in place. He shouted to his teammate to calm down, but his teammate kept shouting that his legs hurt. Jack rushed to comfort him. Bro, the leg is in the tree. It won't hurt in a while. While the severe pain had not yet reached his brain, his teammate trembled and took out the painkillers from his body's pocket, injecting them into the remaining thighs. However, these were not enough. It wouldn't take long for him to go into severe shock due to blood loss. Jack must go over to stop the bleeding as soon as possible. He tested the thing on the bottom of his foot, praying that the bomb would not explode because it was in disrepair. Seeing that Jack was going to risk his life to save himself, his teammate immediately drew his pistol and shot himself. He didn't want Jack to lose his legs as himself. Jack stood in the desert for another two hours. Under the 45 degree heat, his strength was fast running out. Putting the gun on his back, he carefully crouched down. Then he took out his dagger and stabbed into the sand. The touch of metal made him give up his luck. Looking around, there was no one in the desert. Jack noticed his teammates' backpacks. If he called for backup, he might still have a chance to be saved. But the walkie-talkie was so close that it was a luxury for him. Suddenly he had an idea. He took off his shoelace and tied it to the axe head. But after a few attempts, it didn't work. Jack decided to take another chance. But... When he got the walkie-talkie, the headquarters told him that the situation on the front line was critical, and there were often sandstorms in the desert. So, it would take 52 hours for backup to arrive at the earliest. But before help arrived, HQ could direct him to try to defuse the mines. After all, explosives that have been out for 15 years have a 7% chance of failure. The handlers are still all grounded because of the sandstorms. Over. Jack didn't think he was going to make it. Jack's been stuck in the desert for 8 hours now and his food and water supplies are running out. He could only drink his own urine to relieve his dehydration. To add assault to injury, a sandstorm swept in from the distance. Jack rushed to put everything on his back to add weight to prevent being blown away. The sniper rifle in his hand became a useless stick, now only used to support his body. Luckily, the sandstorm came and went quickly. Jack unwrapped his veil and gasped for air. He looked down and realized that his teammates had been blown to their feet. There were still two batteries in his pocket, which should be enough for today's. But when Jack looked around for his walkie-talkie, he realized that he had already been blown into the distance. Jack laughed out loud in despair. There were still 43 hours until the rescue team arrived. The last drop of water was left in the canteen, and there was no more urine left for himself. Because the tricky thing was, Jack started talking to himself. It was his last moment. He pulled out a pistol and put it to his head. Just as he was about to pull the trigger, a man appeared out of the dunes in the distance. Tom heard a screams for help and walked over to him at a strange pace. He asked Jack, why don't you just stand there and go home? Jack gestured and said that he had stepped on a landmine and that it would explode if he moved. Tom began to walk around in front of him as if to laugh at him. Jack pleaded with Tom to help him get the walkie-talkie. But he asked him, why don't you walk over and get it yourself? You have to keep walking. And then he left without looking back. Jack was speechless. There was something wrong with this guy. He had no choice but to force himself to pee and struggle to drink it. A girl carrying a pot of water ran towards him, who turned out to be Tom's daughter. Jack pointed to the radio in the distance, signaling the little girl to help him bring it to him. But the girl didn't seem to understand what he was saying and ran away. Jack's face was hopeless, so he took out his headphones and listened to a song to kill time. The sun was setting, and the temperature in the desert began to drop rapidly. Jack lit a campfire in the sand pit, hoping to survive the night and make it to tomorrow. But the worst thing about spending the night in the desert isn't the cold, it's the predators. Edward Chuck began to make tentative advances. Behind him, in the darkness, their green light of countless saints flickered. Jack knew that these guys were scary, and now that he was on his knees and pouting his asshole, he was undoubtedly tempting the other team to attack him. In a single turn, the bodies of his teammates were dragged away by them. Jack rushed to his rifle and threw the only grenade he had. Soon it was dawn. Jack hadn't slept a wink and was in a terrible state of mind. Then Tom showed up again and asked Jack, Why don't you take a step forward, just in case you don't die? Seeing that Jack was turning his head away from him, Tom went over and took the radio. Hey. Jack took the radio and contacted HQ, but there was no signal. Tom suddenly came up to him. You have to move on. Even wrong path. 
can't get out. Jack saw his teammates in a trance. After Tom left, Jack spent another 12 hours in the desert. He began to hallucinate and even saw his dead teammates crawling out of the sand, urging him to survive. Soon after nightfall, the wolves came back. They were divided into groups, half of them pouncing on his legs, half on his hands, and Jack finally finished them off with a knife. Early the next morning, the walkie-talkie finally picked up a signal. The convoy was on its way to the rescue and was blocked by the enemy. The rescue would be delayed for 17 hours. Hearing this, Jack was physically and mentally exhausted, and in utter despair, he saw his girlfriend right next to him. Luckily, before he fell to the ground, Tom was able to hold him up. Only then did Jack see that Tom's right leg was fake. Before he left, Tom gave Jack a bottle of medicine and told him to be brave and take this step. At that moment, the radio ran again and the rescue team finally arrived. But the desert was too big for them to find him. Jack could only watch as the convoy drove off into the distance. At this point, the flare is not far away, but he just cannot get it. Thinking back to his life and Tom's words, Jack closed his eyes and finally took this step. The mine didn't explode. Jack sat down on the ground. He peeled back the sand and saw that it was just a rusty canning jar. Jack then shot the flare and got rescued. Okay, this video is over. Follow me. The next video will be more exciting.